So it's, it's there right now. It's, re it's right there right now. The thing is it landed on a pretty steep, pretty steep hill, and there's some suspicion that it may have uh, tumbled. A research team from the University of Toronto's Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics is rushing to the tip of South America to retrieve a high-tech balloon-borne telescope called Superbit that landed in the remote hills of southern Argentina. It looks like a desert. A mountainous desert. So the good news is it's probably not going to get soaked. That telescope brought down deliberately by the team overseeing its operation in the hopes of saving valuable equipment and even more precious data collected during its 39 days of operation. Launched out of New Zealand and it had been circling the globe for, for, for about 40 days. For about days. 40 days. Yeah. And uh, during that time it was uh, like, successful? Oh yeah, it was great. It was amazing. Like I, it's pretty, pretty outstanding how well it worked out. Mission partners included the Canadian Space Agency and NASA, with the scientific goal of the flight being to measure the properties of dark matter. That mission brought to an abrupt end with conflicting wind predictions, leaving mission teams with a conundrum. Bring the balloon down now with a high likelihood of saving the equipment and imagery on board, or continue on with a real risk the balloon could be headed to the Antarctic. It brings you down there, then we're going to lose power to the payload. The batteries will die. When the batteries die, it becomes a derelict. We can't recharge them once they're frozen. Then we'd have to drop, then we'd have, before that happened, we'd have to drop it. So we didn't have a derelict balloon floating around in the air, in airspace. So we'd end up dropping it either in the ocean or in Antarctica. Netterfield explaining the advantage of a balloon telescope is you eliminate almost all of Earth's atmosphere, which decreases resolution, while also being much cheaper and faster to develop than trying to launch one into space. Superbit costing about $10 million total versus the $87 million a year just to keep Hubble in the sky. And now with Superbit on the ground, the mission is simple. Going to find it, find the data, find the, get the instrument, get it packed up, get it shipped back here. You guys built it downstairs? Yeah. In, in the, the in shop? In the hive, yep. Yeah. It's more than a little bit of a mess. But these are our electronics labs where we do all of our electronics development. Our machine shop. This is it. This is the final place where Superbit was assembled. Yeah, this is where we built it. Um, there's a hole there with a hoist that goes all the way up to the top of, to the roof that becomes a flight train simulator. And we have this door that opens up here so that we can look out and test the star tracking cameras while we're hanging in here. The team here at the University of Toronto telling us they think the telescope could have lasted twice as long, but they're hopeful the components can be salvaged and work is already underway to design the next. At the University of Toronto, David Zura, City News.